Ah. Well, I must be returning to Donwell, I suppose. Oh, no, please, Mr. Knightley, do not leave us just yet. Father and I must spend all our days alone together now, so we shall be more than ever grateful for your company. Emma! Emma, my dear, the door! The door, my dear, if you'll be so good. There's a most dreadful draught round my feet. I say Mr. Knightley will be more than ever welcome, Papa, now that we are to spend our days alone together without Miss Taylor. Uh, Mrs. Weston, as I suppose I should now call poor her. Poor Miss Taylor, poor Miss Taylor. What a pity it was that Mr. Weston ever set eyes on her. Yes, it is a sad business indeed. Oh, come, Weston's an excellent fellow. He's been a widower too long. You make her the admirable husband that she deserves. But you and Emma will lose housekeeper, governess, companion, and friend all at one stroke. It's poor Mr. and Miss Woodhouse, in my opinion. Especially when one of them is such a fanciful, troublesome creature, Mr. Knightley. Come, speak your mind honestly, sir. That's very true, my dear. I'm afraid I am very troublesome and fanciful these days. Oh, dearest Papa, as though we could possibly mean you. No, Mr. Knightley was merely pursuing his self-appointed task of putting me in my place and keeping me well aware of my faults, were you not, sir? I, I no, said nothing. It was you. No easy take upon yourself, I grant you. But never mind. We understand each other, do we not? Have another piece of wedding cake. It really is delicious. No, thank you. Emma, Emma, my dear good child, whatever are you doing? There will be no Miss Taylor to look after you now, don't forget, if you become unwell. Oh, Father, when have you known me have one day's indisposition since I was a child? I have an extremely robust constitution. Have I not, Mr Knightley? I must say I think you have, Emma. Dear Emma bears everything so well. But she will miss poor Miss Taylor more than she imagined. It's quite impossible that she should not. But she knows how much this marriage is to Miss Taylor's advantage. It really is a most satisfactory thing for all concerned, I should consider. Thank you, Mr. Knightley. I take that as a great compliment coming from you, because I flatter myself that I was chiefly responsible for the match. Oh, come now, Emma, really. Oh, yes. Ever since the day that Miss Taylor and I first met Mr. Weston in Broadway Lane, and because it began to mizzle, he darted into Farmer Mitchell's and brought his two umbrellas. From that very moment, I planned the match. Oh. <laughs> you may smile, Mr. Knightley, but it's the truth. My dear, I wish you would not make matches, for they are most troublesome and wretched affairs. Oh, I promise to make none for myself, Papa, but I do not promise to restrain myself on behalf of others because it's the greatest amusement in the world. And after such a success... Success? What do you mean by success? Why do you not call it a success, then? that two such admirable and well-suited people should come together. Yes, but success, I suppose, is some kind of endeavour. Now, am I to understand that you have been labouring these past four years to bring this match about? It's a fine occupation for a young lady, I must say. Mm, Mr Knightley dearly loves to chide me as though I were still in the nursery, do you not, sir? Indeed, I do not. Oh, yes, you do. But I would have you know that I am no longer of an age to be made to stand in the corner for talking too much. Mm. Happily, for I should no doubt be there a great deal, I'm afraid. You merely said to yourself one day how delightful it would be were Mr. Weston to marry Miss Taylor. And as it happened, he did. Now, what's there to be proud of in that? You merely made a lucky guess, that's all. And have you never known the pleasure of a lucky guess, Mr. Knightley? Certainly. But if you ask me, one is likely to do far more harm than good by interference. Dear Emma never thinks of herself where there is good to be done to others. But pray, my dear, no more matches, please. They break up one's domestic circle most grievously. Only one more, Papa. Now restrain yourself, Emma. Just because you're in need of a new source of entertainment, that's no good reason for turning your attention in some other poor fellow's direction. Have no fear, Mr. Knightley. I would never presume to perform my good offices upon your behalf. Ha! Ah, indeed, I don't No, the person I think most in need of help in that direction at the moment is Mr. Elton. Elton? Elton? What I about Mr. Elton? I thought as he was joining their hands together today, poor young man, he would so much have liked someone to be performing the same office for him. Poor young man, indeed. He has been here for nearly a whole year now, and I hear he has fitted up the vicarage exceedingly well. And a clergyman, more than most men, needs a wife to support and sustain him. But there are so few young women in Highbury who are in any way suitable. But never mind. I shall keep my eyes open. You may depend upon it. my love leave your bonnet alone oh, yes mrs goddard you look very well my child thank you mrs goddard mrs goddard how nice of you to call oh 
Good morning. Good morning, Miss Woodhouse. Miss Woodhouse, may I present Harriet Smith? Harriet was one of my pupils, but now she helps me with some of the younger girls. Well, do sit down, Miss Smith. Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, the girls were so delighted with the cake and the bonbon. Were they not, Harriet? Oh, yes, Mrs. Cobham. It was so sweet and kind of you to think of them in that way. Not at all. My father does not eat wedding cake. In fact, I am sure he would be most alarmed if he knew what I had done. I do hope none of the children suffered as a consequence. Oh, good gracious, no, Miss Woodhouse, did they, Harriet? Oh, no, indeed, ma'am. Good. I'm so glad. I'm sure he would never have forgiven me. And um, have you seen the happy couple since they returned, Miss Woodhouse? Not yet, but I hope to very shortly. I understand that Miss Taylor, had, oh, Mrs. Weston, I should say, had a most agreeable letter from Mr. Weston's son, Mr. Frank Churchill. So I hear. A truly handsome letter, so Miss Bates said. Ah, Miss Bates. So, perhaps we shall see him in Highbury at last. Yes, providing his guardian, Mrs. Churchill, is well enough to permit him to leave Yorkshire. Have you had the pleasure of meeting him, Miss Woodhouse? No, never. <laughs> I confess he's become something of a legend, has he not, Harriet? Yes, Mrs. Goddard. But Miss Bates is of the opinion that he's sure to come now that his father has a regular establishment here, so to speak. Indeed, it would hardly be polite to the second Mrs. Weston if he did not. Uh, well, that is Miss Bates' opinion, anyhow. Oh, well, I only hope the poor young man is sensible of it, that is all. But this gives me an opportunity to issue you with an invitation, Mrs. Goddard. My father and I are giving a small party next Wednesday for Mr. and Mrs. Weston. Quite informal, of course, so please forgive my not writing to you in the normal way. Do say you can come. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, how delightful! Yes, indeed. And Miss Smith. Or may I be allowed to call you Harriet? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, you don't really and mean... perhaps if she could be spared, Harriet could help me with some of the preparations. There are always a hundred and one tiresome little tasks on the day one gives a party, are there not? Harriet! Oh, you'll find her most excellent to run errands, Miss Woodhouse. And if you make yourself quite clear, she will do her utmost, I'm quite sure, won't you, my dear child? Oh, Harriet, you lucky, lucky girl! What do you say? Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Cox? Yes? Uh, Miss Bates? Oh, Miss Bates. Emma, she's an admirable woman. You can't leave her out. Yes, but she is such a great talker upon little matters. Very well, then. Miss Bates. There. That makes 26 in all. Mr. Frank Churchill comes. Yes, but I think you'll find he will not. Oh, why do you say that? I have no particular reason. It's merely my opinion. Emma, my love, I'm worried that you should require the ladies to leave their bonnets and so on in the night nursery. We cannot have them all catching cold down that long passage, poor things. Very well, Papa. Well, that makes 25 in all. Uh, can you think of anyone I may have forgotten? Elton. Oh, no. I have him down already. The Coles. Oh. You sound unenthusiastic. I really do not think I need to ask them. And what, pray, is wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Cole? There is nothing whatever wrong with them. It's just that I do not wish to include them in my party, that is all. There. The list is closed. Very well. And so be it. Don't forget to ask Cook to prepare a bowl of gruel. There are sure to be some, especially among the ladies, who cannot digest rich food at night. Very well, Papa. I won't forget. Should you need any help on the day, I'm sure that my housekeeper would be willing to oblige. No, thank you, Mr. Knightley. Now, how did I make it only 25? Yes, but I'm a good manager. There you are. You surely cannot do without any assistance, whatever. Thank you, but I have Harriet coming for the day. Ah, I had forgot to cross off Mr. Frank Churchill. And who, pray, is Harriet? Harriet Smith is an old pupil of Mrs. Goddard's and a thoroughly excellent and deserving young woman. Aha! I see it all. Harriet Smith, whoever she may be, must be the next to receive your attentions. Oh, Emma, Emma, you're incorrigible. Mr. Knightley, if it pleases you to make sport of me, pray feel free to do so as much as you wish. I can guarantee it will make not the slightest difference to my conduct. I'm quite sure of that. Ah, Williams, we will have dinner at five. Yes, Miss Woodhouse. And Mr. Knightley will be staying. Indeed. Thank you, Williams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.